Hey everyone, today I want to share with you my workflow for rendering from the settings to the final output and how you can use AI to help you speed up your rendering process. We are going to use AI to upscale our render to save a ton of render time, but first I want to show you the different export settings in Unreal Engine 5. To begin, we need to make sure the Movie Render Queue plugin is turned on, then in your master sequence, hit Render and this window will pop up. Go into Settings and you should see this. You can choose different export formats such as JPEG, PNG or EXR sequences. I recommend that you stay away from JPEG as it is very compressed. You can use PNG, it works fine, but I recommend you export with EXR if it's a final render. EXR is a much more detailed format that will keep more information, especially in the bright lights, meaning you will have more control in post-production. Again, if you're spending hours on your final render, it's best to avoid any compression by setting it to none. A compressed EXR is still way better than JPEG or even PNG, but this gets really technical. Now, by default, Unreal Engine uses default rendering, which basically means that what you see in the viewport is what you get in the render. It's pretty simple. It's fast, but it looks more like a game engine than a proper rendering software. But there's another render mode, the Path Tracer mode, which is similar to Cycles in Blender. It's much more accurate, especially for lighting. I'm not going to go into the details of the Path Tracer right now, because that would take a whole other video, but if you want to use it, you can check what your scene looks like by going to the Lit tab in the viewport, then Path Tracing. You can go to the Output settings to set your resolution and its render, but there are a few more options we can look at. First of all, the game override is very important to increase quality because it will bypass the current engine scaling settings you have in your viewport. When you are building a scene, you can decrease the overall quality to avoid overloading your computer and even avoid crashing. The game override option allows you to force the render to use the max quality settings by setting the engine to cinematic quality using the most detailed LOD, etc. Another very important option is the anti-aliasing option, where you will control the amount of samples to use for each frame. This is basically where you will do a lot of testing before rendering to see what works best for your scene and to find the sweet spot between quality and render time. You need to check the override anti-aliasing option, because otherwise you'll get an error message. You will not use the same settings for the deferred rendering or the path tracer. There is a great article published by an Epic Games staff member on the forums that explains what you need to know. To keep it simple, if you use deferred rendering, use the spatial samples or the temporal samples. However, if you are using the path tracer, you need to use both. I'll put a link to the article in the description so you can check it out. Then we can add a color output and disable the tone curve to keep it simple. But if you know about color space and OCO configuration, this is where it's at. And finally, the console variables are great tools to push the quality even further. I simply use the screen percentage command that upscales the render internally before exporting to the correct resolution. Be careful about this one, it can have massive impact on your render time. We are now ready to render. You should always do some testing and render small portions of your animation to figure out the best settings for you. You should also have target resolution in mind. Do you want to export in 1080p or in 4K? If you want to render in 4K, it will take a ton of render time. My first Unreal project was a 1 minute animation that I wanted to render overnight. I tweaked my settings to get roughly 8 hours of render time. I wanted to render it 4K, which would be almost impossible with my time limit. So instead of sacrificing quality, I decided to get the best looking 1080p render I could and use AI upscaling to get it to 4K. Here is the render straight from Unreal. As you can see, the colors are faded, but that's something we can adjust later in color grading. There is also some flickering noise, most visible on the rocks of the end of the first shot. The workflow I recommend, especially if you rendered in EXR, is to get all the color grading and post-production done at this stage. You will take advantage of the EXR format to get from a render to a movie. There are tons of color grading tutorials on YouTube for DaVinci Resolve. It's great and it's free. I did everything on it and it's also the software I used to edit this video. 
There are denoising options in Resolve and they are great to reduce the flickering we had before. But do not use denoising right now. I tried it before upscaling and it did a whole lot of weird visual glitches. It was a mess. Just trust me on this one, we'll apply denoising after upscaling. Once you're done with the post-production, export an over-image sequence, this time in PNG or TIFF. To upscale, I'll show you a free and open source software called Chainer. I'll put a download link in the description, you'll see it's pretty simple. First of all, you need to install the PyTorch files needed to process the images. There are a lot of modules on the left, but you don't need to know all of them. You can actually go to the presets and drag and drop the batch upscale one. The image file iterator will run through your image sequence and upscale every frame. Select the folder where your image sequence is located, then the output folder and the image extension. I usually work with TIFF, but PNG is fine too. Now the last step is to add an AI upscaling model. There is a huge model database, all available for free, that I will put in the description. A lot of them upscale the image to four times its original size, and some of them have specific use cases like removing JPEG artifacts, restoring old themes, etc. I did some testing and I will now show you a few I tried for my animation. As you can see, the results can vary a lot between models. Some are very sharp, like way too much. Some just erase all the details. Some are also slower than others. Depending on your project, you might have different results because mine doesn't have faces in it, there are no characters. But upscaling faces is another challenge for AI models and it can be difficult to find one that will excel at everything. My personal favorite is called Swin2SR and I will link the GitHub page directly because it is not mentioned in the model database. I tested two versions of this model on my footage, the classical one and the real-world one. Here they are. The classical one is the most transparent one. It doesn't do crazy sharpening, it deals with movement nicely. The second one is sharp, but it doesn't look too bad. Actually, I think a bit of sharpening would be good to add to this footage, but I prefer to do it in Resolve and have control over it. For this reason, my favorite model is a Swin 2 SR Classical. A great alternative to that, but it's not free, is Topaz Video AI. It's $299, so it's probably out of your budget if you're not making renders for a living, but for the price you get a very good AI upscaling model that also works really fast. It's impressive. Instead of taking 2 to 4 hours for my 1 minute animation, it took 30 minutes. It's also easier to set up. Once you load your image sequence, you can choose 4x upscale on the right and choose the AI model. Honestly, I tried them all with the preview feature, but to me the best one is Proteus, the one selected by default. So you can just select your export format and you're ready. As you can see, it's very easy to use and very efficient. But whatever solution you end up using, even with the slower models with Chainer, you saved at least a few hours of render time for an animation, maybe even reduced the whole render time in half. That's it for this video. I hope you find it useful to help you increase the quality of your renders and keeping your render time as short as possible. As usual, if you have any questions or any suggestions about another video you want to see, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. See you soon!